Good afternoon and welcome back to Judd Ventures where we're giving you our rundown of the best and brightest in the scare industry. If you've seen our video from Hello Scream yesterday, you will know exactly what we plan on doing today. We're going to give you a rundown of everything you need to know about some of our favourite scare events in the UK. Today we're going to be focusing on another one of Yorkshire's finest and that is Yorkshire Scaregrounds Screen Park. Hello world! Hello! Hiya! How are you, are you doing? Come down to Yorkshire Scaregrounds Screen Park to come and see Uncle Bobo. <laughs> Now, we'll be attending Yorkshire Scareground Screen Park this year and we'll be bringing you a full vlog of the event as well as many other events throughout the UK as well. Only of the parts that we're allowed to film, of course, but if you want to keep up to date with everything that we do in this scare season, please just smash the subscribe button and follow us so you don't miss out on some of the best events in the UK this scare season. So, everything that you need to know about Yorkshire Scaregrounds. Firstly... The location is just east of Wakefield, as shown here on the map, and it's actually on the very, very appropriately named Hell Lane. That's no joke, it's on Hell Lane. What a place to have a scare attraction. Now, tickets for this event are very, very simple. You only have one form of access ticket for entry into the event. There's no fast tracks, nothing like that. It's purely just the entrance ticket and these range from around £27.56 to £29.68. Now yes, that's a very odd amount but I believe it's around £26 and £28. The strange amount on the end is the booking fee. Um, but relatively cheap tickets overall. It costs you more when you get to the premium dates like with any other events. So the closer you actually get to Halloween week, the more expensive it will be. And at weekends, the more expensive it will be. There's no different ticketing options because Yorkshire Scareground actually runs slightly differently to a lot of scare attractions that you will find in the UK. You don't have a selection of houses around the areas where you can choose which to go in and out of. It's very much a linear attraction. What you'll do firstly is you'll arrive at Yorkshire Scaregrounds, you'll park up, almost immediately you'll go into the ticketing booth and into the queue. Now, it doesn't sound very exciting jumping straight into the queue, but this queue area it is undercover, it does have a toilet, so it's a nice relaxing place to be. Relaxing in terms of you're not going to get soaked by the rain and if you need to pee, you can go for the pee. However... Not relaxing in terms of having a huge amount of wandering scare actors interacting with all of the guests. Now, we've been here and we've queued at times when it's been extremely popular on some of the most popular evenings for around 30 to 45 minutes. That seems like a long time. It seems like you might get a bit frustrated before you go in there. But honestly, it is not frustrating in the slightest. That queue line at the start of Yorkshire Scaregrounds it's like an attraction itself. You will have Lord Fear, you'll have Eugene, you'll have at least sort of six or seven different scare actors wandering around and they do an absolutely fantastic job of setting the scene for what you're going to experience when you go through those doors initially. The interaction before you've even got in there is really good and by the time you get to your place to go through, you're actually thinking, aww, because you want to stay and interact with these characters, they are that good. When it gets to your turn, you'll be split up into your group. At really, really busy times, they can group you with other groups, up to a maximum of around 12 people. Usually, if you go on a quieter day or an earlier time in the day, you tend to just be in your group. Not really in twos, but if you've got a group of four, a group of six, it'll just be your group going through. You'll go into that pre-show, and in the pre-show, you will just get your standard... Um, screens which will tell you don't film in the attraction don't smoke in the attraction don't be a dick in the attraction all of the usual things and then once you've been through that you then get sent out onto this very linear path and when i say linear i don't mean that it's a boring straight path i mean linear in terms of you can't really go off the beaten track there is a path for you to follow all the way through the event till you get to the end it does meander, it does wind, it goes in and out, but you have to stay on that track through until the end. 
at multiple points through the event. You'll have areas where you may be held for one or two minutes and they have actors there which form part of the story. You listen to what they say. They give you a little bit of exposition as to the houses that are coming for you and then they allow you to go in and that exposition allows you to batch correctly it keeps it free flowing and it stops people from grouping together and missing out on those scares and because it's part of the story you'll have potentially like a military guy on the outside warning you about going into the building etc it doesn't feel like you're in a holding area it just feels like you're in a bit of a pre-show but it does allow everything to flow smoothly eventually you'll go through all of the zones and all of the mazes and you'll get to the finale which I'm not going to spoil for you what happens in the finale, because when you do come out, if you know what's going to happen, it's nowhere near as exciting as if you don't know it's going to happen. And then also, it's nowhere near as exciting for us people that have finished watching you come out into that finale, because that's an incredible sight to see. So, when you eventually come out and you finish this final section, you do come into the hub area at Yorkshire Scaregrounds. Now, this hub area I'll talk a little bit about before we move on to the mazes that we've just been through. So as soon as you come out, you're usually directed into a shockingly good photo booth. And those that have been in there know what I mean by shockingly good. Once you've had your photo taken, you can go inside the merch store and get yourself a digital copy of it as well. Now, when you go into the merch store, it was not brand new last year, but it would really been redone last year. Lots of work had taken place on the inside it now looks really really nice in there you'll have a range of standard halloween costumes standard halloween props as well as all of the yorkshire scaregrounds merch in there as well they'll have hats they'll have t-shirts uh, they'll potentially have some hoodies lanyards all those kind of things branded with the logos and all kinds of things like that it's a nice selection of merch to be in there and it's not overly expensive either Outside of the merch area, you'll find a big seating area, undercovered seating, a nice place to sit, relax, have a bit of a drink, have some food, um, have a smoke or a vape if you partake in such things. The food options that are there are really good. It's not obviously Cordon Bleu, Michelin star, mind-blowing food. It's street food. You've got burgers, hot dogs, fries, all those kind of things. It's very, very carnival feeling, which is what I love about these events. You'll be able to smell those fried onions, see the cheese melting. It's dirty, it's greasy, it's the kind of food you want on a cold autumn night at a scare event. Can't wait to try some of it again. Um, you've got the, that, that kind of standard food as well as a lot of dessert options as well, so donuts, waffles maybe. There's a huge photo wall for you to take a Scaregrounds photo of yourself and your group, whoever's going there. There's also brand new for last year, which is Jack's Backyard Bar. It's an extremely well done and extremely good looking and fully licensed bar. So if you want to stop for a couple of drinks before you travel home, then you can do. And it also, next to it, has some of the poshest toilets ever at a scare event. But if you do use them, be wary, because this can happen. Oh, yeah. I'm not sure if it's back this year because I haven't seen it really advertised, but last year they did have an upcharged axe throwing. I think it was Battle Axe Sheffield came down and you could go and you could use some throwing axes, some throwing knives and just have a play around. It wasn't too expensive. We had a go. I can show you on screen now. It was fun and it was a nice little additional extra just to the whole up area and the event. And finally, there is a festival stage showing a range of entertainment. Now, we left before this actually kicked off last year, but it does have some good shows, some nice evening entertainment, especially around that bar area. Now, this final hub area, it is a standard hub area. It has your food, your sit-down areas, your bars, but it is consistently one of our favourite bits about going to Yorkshire Scaregrounds. Now... That's not to say that the mazes aren't great, because they are. It's just that the effort that is put into this hub area at the end is astronomical. The guys that are wandering around, usually the same guys that are there at the start of the evening, are now back for the end of the evening. And the hang around the area, you've got Lord Fear, you've got Eugene, you've got Uncle Bobo. The character interaction that you get from all of these is second to none. 
it really is fantastic very much like we mentioned on the hello screen video these guys you recognize each year are coming back and playing the same characters they get settled into these characters they create their own backstories and it allows them to really go hard with the acting of these characters and they are just fun to be around there's times we've spent just as much time in the hub area at the end interacting with these guys as we have actually going through the mazes the mazes aren't quick it's just that we love to stay and it's one of those times like being the last person to leave a party you just don't want to go and leave that kind of fun behind they really are that good now speaking of the mazes there's actually seven mazes and zones coming this year now some of them will have a pretty good idea of where they're going to be because they'll be or should be in the same locations as they were last year and others we might get out of order but i'm pretty confident i have got the lineup pretty much spot on as to where it will be in terms of location now as soon as you come out of the initial pre-show you're going to go down a, a large amount of steps until you get to a forest trail you're going to walk through that forest trail and you're going to come across the carnival of carnage scare zone you go through the remnants of this crashed like train car it's snapped in half i'm pretty sure it's an actual train car it's a fantastic thing to behold as you're walking through it and it's a really good scare zone now the story is that this carnival was traveling by train the train crashed it spread the carnival equipment everywhere and now you've got the reanimated clown corpses coming around to get you that's my understanding of the story anyway so whilst it might not seem like the hugest themed area it actually fits in really well with the story that it is just having these random bits of sort of carnival paraphernalia littered around like they've come from the crash whilst you're being stalked by these crazy clowns it's a good area and it's a class way to get started at Yorkshire Scaregrounds as well. Now, once you've gone through this first zone, you usually arrive at the first holding area for the first actual maze. Now, I'm making the presumption here that the first maze is going to be De Glocker. Now, I'm pretty sure I've pronounced that right, De Glocker. It's German for the bell. For those of you that might not be up on your pseudoscience, the bell was a rumoured super weapon designed by the Nazis, and there's been lots of rumours through the years as to what it could be for. Could it be to create some sort of breach in the space-time continuum? Could it be to, you know, create Captain America a super soldier? Or was it just for some form of sort of booster technology, rocket technology, or a mass weapon? Either way, that story is based on German Nazi pseudoscience. So my assumption is, whilst they may not go full in on the Nazi theme, then what you're probably going to get in this scare maze is going to be a very sort of half old, half futuristic kind of scientific experiment gone wrong. Um, the people that are left there will be affected by this experiment and they'll suddenly either become ravenous zombies or they'll just become psychotically, you know, have this psychotic love of killing, and you're the ones that have got to go through this experiment. But either way, it's a great concept, and it should be really, really good. Now, you'll walk straight out of that scare maze, and straight into the next scare zone, which I'm 100% confident will be the harvest. Now, I loved the harvest last year. It's really, really effectively done in the same way as Carnival Carnage. So you're coming out straight into the forest again. It's There's no huge loud music. There's no special effects lighting. You're just in a forest on this trail. There's scarecrows dotted around the area. You don't know which are real. You don't know which are people. You can hear the cracking of twigs underneath people's feet. You've got this airy sound playing in the background, but it's not quite music. Potentially a little bit of mist there, and you don't know where the scares are coming from. It's a nice, creepy, airy maze, and it's so effectively done out in that forest area. I love the concept, I love the execution, and I can't wait to get back into this zone this year. Now, I'd assume that the very next zone that you're going to hit is going to be the toxic scare zone, because... There is an area just after the harvest which has been there in previous years under different names. Now I won't lie, in previous years this has by far been the worst part of the event for me. It's a very small area, 
the past couple of times we've been, it's had a real lack of theming, maybe one or two scare actors. It's not particularly needed. I feel it takes away from what is usually an extremely good of event in all of the other mazes. So to have this little bit that kind of takes you out of that immersion has never made sense to me. What I've always suggested is quite possibly extend the harvest. I love the harvest, as you can tell. But extend the harvest and create a longer, more immersive experience for the harvest and just get rid of that last little bit. I feel it's too short to really have an effective zone in there. However... I haven't been this year, um, I don't know what it's going to be like, so I'm only going on previous experience of a very small section of Yorkshire Scaregrounds. This year, they could have really hyper-themed it, um, it's got a new theme, they could have new theming, they could have new lighting, they could have more scare actors, and it could be really well done. Even if it's not, even if it is a similar vein to previous years, it almost gives you that little bit of a breather, it does take you out of the immersion, but it's not enough to spoil the rest of the evening. You're looking at like 3% of the whole trail is this little area. So let's see how it's done this year. And then finally, after you've gone through that zone, you're into what I see as the second section. So you've got the first section, which is the primarily the zones and one maze. And then you go into the second section, which is all mazes. And this second section, whilst the start is already really good, this second section is where Yorkshire Scareground strengths lies. Because as you walk in, you're straight into Whitechapel Undead. Now, this has been different versions of Whitechapel over the years. This year, it's an undead maze. This is classed as a scare maze. It's not classed as a scare zone. You're never actually fully inside a maze but it's not quite a zone. The effort that they've gone into this actually makes it, for me, more like a scare set or a scare village. It's like being on a movie set. There's wide open areas where you can see things happening in the distance, but then you've also got this entire village of houses and churches and sort of ale houses that you walk in and out of. You're, you're walking down the streets. You're walking in and out of houses. It's really well done, and each and every year, they tend to put a new level of theme in there. It's like they just go, I need to add a new church over there, put it over there, and it grows every year. It's a, For me, it's really one of the best themed areas, uh, any of these mazes. It's theming, and it's theming done properly. It's really good. The stonework looks gritty and dirty like it's falling apart. It looks like you're in an old village. It's an exciting place to be, and when you've got it full of scare actors as well, it's a perfect start to the second half of Yorkshire Scaregrounds. Once you've been through Whitechapel Undead, you'll walk sort of out of this area, and you'll have this striking visual in front of you, because you'll have this old house on the hill, this wooden built house, big porch veranda, big windows. It's a beautiful facade. Um, and I checked on Google Maps just to make sure because I thought, this is a real house that they've built. But when you look at it, it does appear to be just a facade on the front of an actual building. But it is one of the best facades that I've seen at any maze in the UK. There's some mazes in the UK with great theming, but to have that entrance portal to it, that is pretty damn astounding. And it doesn't stop there as well because... This will probably be your second holding area. You will go onto the porchway, in which case you will be stood for maybe two, three minutes before they let you into a little pre-show, and off you go into this house. Now, this house this year is actually Krampus rewrapped. This is an incredible maze. The theming on the inside of this house is on par with some of the best places in the country, like Extreme Scream. If you've ever been inside of the village, in this house, it's very, very similar. There's tiny inch-sized details that no one is ever going to see. But if you look hard enough, you'll find them. They really work on the details inside this. Lots of ornate woodwork. Lots of different meandering rooms. Tons of details on every shelf. Really, it is fantastic. And then you've got this overlay in there as well of Krampus. So you've got Christmas trees up. You've got old-style Christmas decorations and you've got Krampuses like minions following you around and scaring you all the way through. It really is a fantastic house. And having that Christmas Krampus theme as well is a nice, unique idea. Lots of places in the UK do clowns. Lots of places in the UK do slaughterhouses. 
Not many people do horror and Christmas mixed in one. And it's making me really excited for this one. Now, I do believe from reading up on it that this is the last year that we're going to be getting a Krampus maze, which, unfortunately, that makes me a little bit sad. It is a great one. I remember going when they did the Christmas scare event to it a few years back. And also last year they had a version of Krampus as well. It's always really good. Definitely one worth doing. And then once you're in Krampus, you actually go into the next maze without really knowing about it. It's blended seamlessly in the middle. And at one point you're in amongst the Krampus house and the next you'll think, hold on, this theme don't fit. And you'll actually be in Asylum haunted hallways now this is the theme that's going to be replacing last year's clown clinic and historically it's the most intense part of the entire yorkshire scaregrounds it's a madhouse in there it's very hospitalized medicinal it's got the smell pods that make you feel like you're in a hospital it's got that asylum feel to it um, or it, at least it did last year that's probably going to be used to the effect this year of having that haunted asylum or haunted hospital vibe it does have that very hospitalized aesthetic to it which works really really well in a scare maze but it's intense it's loud there was lots of scares in this area last year a really intense way to finish the night and once you've finished you'll actually come out into this finale that we talked about earlier, which I'm not going to give away because the sight on people's faces when they hit it, because it's just that cherry on top of how you can finish your day or night at Yorkshire Scaregrounds. So that is everything that I feel you need to know for Yorkshire Scaregrounds Green Park 2024. Let us know in the comments down below, have you ever been to Yorkshire Scaregrounds and what did you think? Or are you planning to go this year? Will we see you there? If you've liked this video, please smash the like button. It's always appreciated. And if you want to see more of these what you can expect videos for lots of the scare attractions around the UK, or if you want to just be ready for our vlogs when we visit all of these scare attractions this scare season, then please smash the subscribe button down below. We are on that track to two whole thousand, which is nothing compared to some. But for us, it means an absolute massive amount to us i never thought i'd get to 100 to be aiming for 2000 it's unbelievable so please smash away smash now with that being said we'll see you on the next one let's go scare season